This video is sponsored by Regin Dojo, which offers training courses for Regin and technical art from veterans of the industry. Head over to Regin Dojo to find more about it. All right, guys, so welcome back to a new tutorial. This time is Unity. And that is because lately I've been working a lot in Unity due to my work. So I've been learning a lot more about it. So one of the first things I actually had to do was to write a native plugin in order to interface with a C++ SDK in doing graphics and whatever, right? So I decided to make a quick tutorial about it. What are the different pieces you, ha you have to have in place and so on in order to have it work. All right, so let's get started. First of all, there are two parts in this. There is the pure C++, and then there is the C-sharp glue in order to use whatever code you wrote in C++, uh, C++ in Unity. So let's start uh, with the C++ side. Uh, I'm also going to show you how you can get DirectX resources, like the device and the context, so you can start doing your own graphics, rendering your own DirectX call from C++, all right? So, first of all, you need to create your a new project. I usually call it uh, created into the root, not inside asset, inside the root, so it's not going to fight uh, with whatever else is inside asset. So I create a folder and everything is in there of my native plugin, all right? So you create an empty project, doesn't have to be anything fancy, and then there are a couple of, sorry, this one, a couple of things you need to set. So let's have a quick look at the configuration. So first of all, make sure to be on 64 bits. You need to change from application, right, so exe to D, uh, D DLL, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a DLL that then we can load inside Unity and use. Next, we need some includes. So Unity exposes a really, really limited plugin API. And that plugin API folder with all the includes that we're going to see later is inside your editor folder, data plugin API. So you just need to add this include directory and you're good to go. Nothing else, nothing to link. This is pretty much it configuration wise. Let's get started. So in order to Interface with Unity, of course, you need to include iUnity Graphics, which is the Unity interface. All right, that's the first thing include. If then you need DirectX support for your stuff, you need to include first the DirectX header you need. So I think you can support DirectX 12 already. Um, also DirectX 9 and 10, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But include that, and then you include the specific Unity Graphics direct. Uh, direct 3D 11, or I think so. There is 12 as well, right? So there is a 12, there is 10. I think 10 works. No, there is not. So DirectX 10 and 12. Make sure that your DirectX 11 or 12 header, this is one coming from Microsoft, is before you include the Unity one, otherwise, it won't work. Okay? First things we're going to do is to create an external C, right? With the parentheses, everything we do is inside there. That's because C++ likes to mangle the names of the function automatically, right? In order to support polymorphisms and so on, right? So here you set, you write set debug function. That's not the actual name of the function in the end. It's going to use the input arguments to mangle the name to get your name. So basically saying external C, basically say, hey, I need to interface with C, don't change, um, don't change the name, all right? Um, so two main functions that Unity exposed to you are callbacks, right? So the first one is Unity plugin load. So it's a function that Unity calls when the plugin is getting loaded. And then you have Unity plugin unload when the the plugin gets unloaded. So whatever you need to do, initialization or cleanup, you can do it in there. Like, for example, you might have to release some resources, you're doing it in there. Okay? So don't worry about those lines. This is for the graphics stuff. We're going to cover that last. Finally, Unity requires another callback from you. 
um, that basically returns a function that you can call whenever you need it. So the and you can define this function whenever you want. So in this case, I call the get event function, which returns a, a rendering event, which is nothing more than a type that you can see of a function, which returns nothing and takes as an input an integer. All right. So you then you need to declare basically this function, uh, which is on render event. In my case, you can call it however you want. Um, and as you see, it returns void and takes in as an input uh, an integer. So this event ID is up to you. You're going to pass this argument in, you're going to see later. So you can use it to basically identify what you need to do. Let's say you need to do different things in different part of the C sharp code. You can use this event to figure out where from where this function has been called. So um, there are a couple of macro here that have been used. They look scary, but they are not. So Unity Interface Export is nothing more than a type def uh, that is used to basically export function from a DLL. So it just maps to uh, decal spec DLL export. So they just define their own, which is pretty common to do, to be honest. And then using Unity Interface API, nothing more than defining how you're going to call the call, which is using standard call. That's it. So every function that you're going to call from C sharp, you need those two. Here I actually didn't set it up, but it works anyway. I got lucky because by default, that's probably the function call, function for type. There we go. All right. And then we are good. Um, the next thing uh, which I'm going to show it to you is the C sharp blue code. And then in the end, I'm going to show you this other part of the code where basically we're going to set we're going to set up in a way the debug function so that we can call uh, debug.log from C++. So basically we can print into Unity console. All right. It's a bit convoluted, but no need to worry about that. And then as a the last thing, we're going to see the graphic stuff. So once you're in Unity, you then just create a, a script. And then you jump into uh, into the solution, all right? And there are a few things that we need to do. So it's not special; it's a mono behavior. We are going to declare on a hard coded string, which is um, the name of the plugin, basically the name of the DLL, the C++ DLL, all right? So in our case, we call the project native plugin, so it's going to generate native plugin DLL, all right? So you just need the name of the plugin without .dll. Next, uh, we are going to need a few functions. In order to access a C++ function from C Sharp, you first need to tell him to load the DLL. All right, so DLL import plugin name. This is basically telling, hey, this function is, call is coming from this DLL. So we have a get event function, which returns an int pointer which is a marshal, marshalling type, all right? Basically for a pointer, nothing fancy. So if you remember, get event function is our function that returns our callback. Basically the function that we want Unity to call whenever it's time to do stop, which can be a rendering as well. It's being called in the render loop. This is all crap. For, for the debug, so we are not going to worry about it. We're just going to see how we can call our function. Um, so this is all for the debug, don't worry about it. So inside the start, I'm just going to create a new command buffer. All right. I'm going to set the name, plugin name, so we can also see it in the, how it's called. Oh, I forgot the name. The debug tool. Render doc, sorry. So we can even see in the render doc the command buffer with the correct name. Then I'm just going to grab a camera and add the command buffer to after G buffer. So make sure that in this specific case you are on the fur. If you're not in the fur, you can attach it to a different event, doesn't matter. And finally, in update, we are just going to issue a plugin event inside the command 
and then we're gonna pass in as an argument get event the result of get event function. So basically, get event function is going to return our callback on rendering event. And then here you pass in your integer. This can be whatever, right? That's some it's a piece of data that you can use in your function in your C++ code to know what you're doing. All right, so that's that's pretty much it. Every frame is going to call our function. So you can debug that, uh, use the debugger to know if the function is being called or not. Now what we're going to do, we're going to set up the debug print so we can actually see from there. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is a delegate. All right, so delegate is a fancy way in C sharp basically to define a function pointer. All right. Once, once we have the function pointer, we need our callback function. This is a function which is going to be called from C++ and we perform the print. So we see that basically we get a string from C++ and then we call debug log with our string. So whatever C++ is giving us to print, we're going to print it. Then this is the function in C++, right, where we are going to give us an argument our C-sharp function. So you can see this work, uh, oh, sorry about the noise. So this work in both ways. We are going to give a C, a C++ a function from C-sharp to call so that we can print. All right, so then in the start, we create a delegate, right, with our callback function. So now our, our delegate, delegate now points to callback function, which is just the print from C-sharp. From this, we extract a native pointer that can be used in C++ using get function pointer delegate for delegate. And then we call the set debug function, which is, if you remember, is a function from C++. That's why there is the DLL import. And we pass our function pointers. So then if we check in C++, there is set debug function, which takes a function pointer. And just gonna uh, set up that um, as a variable. We have a global variable here called function pointer debug. A function pointer is nothing more than uh, a function which takes in a const char, which then in C sharp is remapped to a string. It's a bit convoluted, but if you play with it a little, uh, you will figure out what's going on. You will probably understand. So now inside our render event, we're just going to say debug log. That's it. All right. Now there is one last piece of the puzzle. You need to make Unity being able to find this DLL. All right. So when we build, it builds inside x64. All right. So you have your DLL here. You need then to copy that inside asset. So there is an automatic way to do that. So if you go in your solution, C++ solution properties, there is a build event tab. You go in post build event. So after your uh, stuff has been built, your DLL has been built, and then you put in this command, which basically say copy my DLL into going from solution dir, which solution dir is native plugin. So go from here go up one, go inside asset, and copy the file. All right, so automatically, if I now I build, you see it's going to build fine, and then it's going to try to copy and will fail. The reason why the copy is failing is because the DLL is blocked by Unity. Unity already loaded this DLL. This is one of the downside of doing native plugin. It's kind of like when you work with Maya. You close the application you're using your, your DLL, so your DLL goes down, and then you can use it. Anyway, so let's just try it. So we press play, and we see that we get the hello world print, every frame. So you see the counter keeps increasing, all right? Every frame, it gets called because it's in the command buffer, all right? So that's it. That's how you set up a native plugin. So let's wrap it up by showing the graphic part. So if you are in need to do some graphics, so DirectX graphics call, you need two things. You need the device and you need the context. So let's see how to do that.
On plugin load, Unit is going to give you a pointer to a, a Unit interface. Unit interface basically is a class struct that basically tries to abstract the hardware from you. All right. So from here, what we are going to do is that we are going to use a get to, in order to get a specific interface. In this case, we want to get a D3D11 interface. So unit is going to grab that, return it to us. Once we have that, it's a piece of cake. First of all, we can just grab the device and we save it. Uh, I usually make a global namespace with a stu I stuff all my stuff in. Um, and then if you need the context as well, you just say device, get immediate context. And you pass in a pointer to where you want to write your context. And that's it. You now have everything you want to do, rendering, dispatch compute, everything. I use that to basically do a lot of stuff. For example, last time I needed to go into native was to do occlusion culling, because I needed to do some weird binding to texture MIPS, which Unity didn't let me do from C-sharp. All right. So that's it for today, guys, and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.